My name is Loretta Konyak. I'm president of the American Slovak Cultural Association of the Mahoning Valley. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our Slovaks. At the turn of the, of the 1900s, steel mills formed an almost continuous band in the greater Mahoning Valley. It stretched from Warren, Ohio to Lowville, on into western Pennsylvania, into Sharon and Farrell, and these huge belching dirty giants of industry built to take advantage of our iron ore and coal deposits were here to provide for the growing demand for steel in construction and manufacturing. And to do this, they needed workers. And it was not, it was not unusual to see flames in the air and the smell of sulfur but it didn't bring on thoughts of brimstone and eternal damnation. It brought the promise of a future bright with the vision of prosperity. That's the Mahoning Valley that the Slovaks saw when they were fleeing poverty. They were Slovaks, but they were in the Austro-Hungarian Empire and very often worked for an absentee landlord who didn't care much about them either in the farms or in the mines. All they wanted was the harvest and the minerals. So the Slovaks were willing to leave these isolated villages looking for the promise of work and good wages and leaving their home. Very often the only thing they took with them was a photograph to remember their family because you might never see them again. It was also not unusual to get married before you left, but you had to leave your wife behind because you had no money to take her. So they would promise to save up enough money and come back and get her. They would leave their village, wherever it was, usually in the mountains on the eastern part of Slovakia, and they would head to Germany because that is where they would get the ships at the seaport of Bremen, either walking through Poland and Germany, or if they were lucky, going to Vienna and catching a train that would go through the Czech Republic and Germany so that they could get on a ship to America. It took about two weeks in steerage to get across the Atlantic, maybe longer if the weather were bad, but eventually they would see the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. When they made it through New York, they would be heading to Youngstown. Why Youngstown? They knew those steel jobs were there because they would get a letter from a brother, a cousin, a friend who would tell them the jobs were there, the Slovak communities were there. Please come. So by, nine, by 1890, there were about 30 Slovak families in the Youngstown area and 50 single Slovak men. These first Slovaks sent money home to their families, and when there was enough money, they would come to the towns of our valley, towns like Niles and McDonald's and Warren, Youngstown, Camel, Struthers, Lowville, Sharon, Farrell, all of these saw an influx of Slovaks. By 1922, the census of Slovaks in the Mahoning Valley listed over 2,000 different Slovak family names living in nine different areas from Hazleton to Struthers and from Steelton to Lansingville. By 2000, that census showed over 65,000 people in the Mahoning Valley who listed Slovak as their ancestry. It was basically a four-county area, Trumbull and Mahoning here in Ohio, and Mercer County and Lawrence County in Pennsylvania. Now, we think of them as work coming to work in the mills, but actually they worked in many industries. The mills, of course, other industries, railroads, particularly the p and -E, the Erie Railroad also came through here. Some own neighborhood stores and groceries uh, where not only did they provide food and services that the immigrants needed, but they spoke their language. 
There were also neighborhood taverns and bars where the mill workers relaxed after their shifts in the mill. And occupations, anything from shoemakers to paperboy to printers, newsprinters, and farms. Often there were farms in the outlying areas that the people lived on. Maybe they, the father worked in the mill and this was kind of a supplemental income or maybe they just lived on the farms. But what they were really looking for were a chance to build a church. They went to St. Cyril. Uh, St. Cyril and Methodius was the first Slovak parish in Youngstown. It was established in 1896, completed in 1901. But churches went up on all sides of town. St. Matthias in Lansingville, Jan Hus Slovak Evangelical Lutheran, on Mahoning Avenue, uh, now known as St. James Lutheran, um, Holy Name Roman Catholic Church, First Slovak Presbyterian, St. Nicholas Byzantine Catholic. It was a great honor and pride to have a religious vocation in the family, whether it was a nun or a priest, or maybe both. The church was the center of the Slovak life in Youngstown. That's where you made your first communion. You served as altar boy. Your parents got married there. You went to school there. Uh, your mother worked in the Rosary Altar Society. Uh, you went to May Crowning. There was entertainment through the church. Mock weddings and Jaslichkari at Christmas. There were the fraternals formed, like the Sokols and the Jednota and the National Slovak Society um, and the Slovak Evangelical Union. Not only did it provide an outlet for the young people, it also provided help and aid for people in an era when there were no unemployment benefits, no disability programs. They had to publish their own newspapers. It was a different time, but there was always time for sports. They, that was a major part of the community from schools and neighborhoods. Any kind of sport you can imagine, men's and women's bowling, uh, children's little league, semi-professional teams like the Tatras in 1908, or the Sandlot teams, the Hazelton Dodgers, the Sokols. There were 30-some teams over time and they traveled from state to state playing but there were also those who made the professional leagues Jack Kralik this is his Indians card George Shuba who just died a few years ago and right now there's a statue being made of a famous handshake that George Shuba and Jackie Robinson shared when Jackie Robinson was the first black man getting a home run on a mixed team. That will be going up at the Youngstown Amphitheater downtown next year because that'll be the 75th anniversary. Uh, Dave Dravecki in baseball, Bernie Kozar in football. So many it was hard to pick just a few. But what was really important was the families the mothers, the grandmothers, the weddings, the cousins, military sons who came home before leaving and got their pictures taken, new babies in the family. There were so many family and childhood pictures, but you'll notice none of them are ever smiling. Um, Celebration of New Citizenship, a very important event. And of course, serving in the military. Men, women from the First World War, Second World War, onward through the Korean War, and every war since then. Every branch of the military. The churches and communities were very proud of their sons as they went to serve and later of the women. They would send them off to serve their country and sadly very often die for their country. But 
Our grandparents and great-grandparents may not have had much formal education when they came, but the first thing they did was send their children to school, their grandchildren to college. They became engineers, musicians, business owners, teachers, doctors, nurses, policemen, lawyers, clergymen, nuns, sports figures, scientists, judges, politicians. They never regretted coming here. They also never forgot the old country traditions. And the young people who started out took all that life offered, and they were satisfied that it was worth the journey. 